see the worst in me. Everyone else around me everyone else around could only, could only see, see the worst in me. Oh, I, he saw, he saw all the best, best in me. Everyone and everyone else around me could only see, see the worst. worst. He's 
Doesn't matter what I did. He only sees me for who I am. Oh, 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 oh. he is mine, and I am his. It doesn't matter what I did. He only sees me for who. Everyone else. saw 
the best in me and everyone else. And everyone else around could only could see, only could only see, see the, the world. Everyone else around me can only see the worst in me. Oh, oh, oh he saw the best in me. And everyone else around me could only see, could only see the worst in me. Said he saw the best in me. Oh, he saw the best, he saw the best in me. He saw. see the worst in me oh, oh, oh. he saw the best in me when everyone else around me could only see the worst in me Everyone else around, 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 When everyone else around me could only see the worst in me. Ooh, oh, oh, he, he saw the best in me. When 
everyone else around when everyone else around could only see, see you the worst, worst in me Doesn't matter what I did, he only sees me for who I am. Oh, 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 oh. he's mine, and I am his. It doesn't matter what I did, no, no. He only sees me for who. When everyone else around and everyone else around Yeah, could only, only see, see the worst, worst in me oh, 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 yeah, yeah He saw, he, he saw, saw the best, best in me When everyone else, when everyone else around Oh, could only see, see the worst, worst. Yes, he did when everyone when else around Oh, could only, only see the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst. Oh, 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 he saw the best in me when everyone else.
Everyone else around. Everyone else around me Everyone else around me Could only see the worst in me Uh He is mine And I am his It doesn't matter what I do He only sees
everyone else around me only see the worst in me he saw the best All the best in me. And everyone else, everyone else, and everyone else could only, only see, only see the worst in me. Oh, he saw the best in me, yes, he did. Oh, but everyone else. Could only see the worst in me. In me, in me. Could only see the worst in me. In me, in me. He saw the best in me. When everyone else around could only see the worst in me. Somebody help me say praise the Lord. Let's say it again. I think we owe him some praise today. Praise the Lord. Put your hands together and give him some praise. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. The church has assembled at the FedEx Forum today to celebrate the life of our brother Lorenzen Wright. I said the church has assembled at the FedEx Forum to give celebration to the life and the legacy of our brother Lorenzen Wright. We should try to be as kind as possible to the family today. They have suffered tremendously over the last few days. And the best that we can do here today is to be kind to them, realizing that uh, if we get long-winded and, and go on and on, we're putting extra burden on them. The program is as follows. The Old Testament scripture, the Reverend Eddie Galladay, senior pastor of Cane Creek Baptist Church, Oxford, Mississippi. New Testament scripture and prayer by Bishop William M. Young, the Healing Center Baptist Church. And then a musical selection is at the 
Daryl Prayne, for musical selection after the scripture. Amen. From the Old Testament, Psalms number 84, beginning with verse number 1, ending with verse number 4. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord, of he heaven's army. I long, yes, I faint with longings to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, my body and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Even the sparrow find a home, and the swallows build her nest and raise her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's army, my King, my God, what joy for those who can live in your house, always singing your praise. Psalms number 84, verses 1 through 4. Our New Testament scripture comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 11, beginning at verse 19. And many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Let us pray. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Paul, God of Jesus, we give you thanks for the life of Lorenzen Wright. We honor you for the many accomplishments you've allowed him to experience. We are here today to celebrate his life, but we are also here to grieve with this family. Help us to console each other at a time like this. As the question why is asked, help us to realize that you have all the answers to all the questions. In a world where many young men are dying every day, change our hearts from hatred to love. In a world where chaos exists, let your peace abide. In a world where fear dominates the minds of many, bring us to a state of sanity. Stretch forth your mighty hand to touch Memphis, Tennessee. Touch every neighborhood, from South Memphis to Germantown from Hickory Hill to Scudderfield, from uptown to downtown. Help us to learn how to live together. Bless the leadership of this great city. Direct law enforcement in restoring order to our streets as we learn to do justice, love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Lord, we thank you for the resurrection we appreciate the fact that Lorenzo's life was not futile. His mistakes were not fatal. And praise be to God, his death was not final. Like you raised Jesus from the grave, we believe that all who believe will one day be raised. Prick the hearts of unbelievers today to seek your face while they still have the time. 
comfort this family, especially the children, with the knowledge that earth has no sorrow, that heaven cannot heal. We ask this prayer in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our omnipotent Savior. Amen.
put your hands together one more time and give a celebration for this. This is a celebration of a life of a great soul. The next group will come, words of comfort, Dr. Bill Atkins, Greater Imani Church and Christian Center. Also, he is a national chaplain for the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Then we will have tribute to my father, Lorenzen Wright Jr. and Lauren Wright. Family tribute. Um, is, that, is that Trevino? I, know, I may not be saying it correctly, but Vassa and group. And then uh, Lorenzen Journey, closer to you, Cassie Bynum. In that order, would you please come? To the family, to friends, and all of the fans of Lorenzen, an old king once charged his wise men to invent him a sentence to be ever in view and which would be true and appropriate in all times and in all situations. They presented him with these words, and this too shall pass away. We have gathered here today to pay our respects and to show our love for Wren. Wren was close to me, my fraternity, my family, a giant of a man whose heart was as large and as tall as his height. His smile was infectious, his work ethic unmatched, his generosity prolific, and his commitment unswervering. Taken from us too soon and too horrifically, Lorenzen will always be remembered for his talent on the basketball court, but also for his love of people off the court. But these are difficult times in which we live. Violent crime has taken away our best. Homicide is still the leading killer of our young men. The loss of Lorenzen has hurt and wounded every one of us. It stings because it was so unnecessary. It hurts because a cry of help went unnoticed and unattended. It cuts deeply into the very fiber and impels us with a deepening sense of loss. And some may think that God has forsaken us. Some may believe that there is no balm in Gilead to heal a wounded soul. Some may have given up and drifted into depression. Some may feel that all hope is lost. But I came by here this afternoon just to remind all of you Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. We know Lorenzen is all right because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But for those of us who remain here on this earth, for those of us who are still hanging around, for those of us who are still going through something, for this family that's grieving and hurting right now, for those of us that just can't understand why this had to happen, I have these words for you. Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is a challenging time that we're in right now. But if we hold on, I said if we hold on, Family, if you hold on to God's unchanging hand, joy 
is coming in the morning. have the tribute now. And if they don't feel up to it, we can hold it for a minute. Thank you. Family tribute, Vassa, are you here? I'm going to ask the next, next person uh, with the, the journey, Cassie Bynum, would you also come to the stage so we can execute much time as possible? You, it's a long ways from down there up here. So if you'll all come on up together, we'll make seats for you. Can't say, Cuzzo. We take the house tonight, baby. A bit of green. A bit of green. If you seen him, nine times out of ten, you seen me. The best cousin I could ever pass in the world. Ain't he? He may have lost his son. All my friends and everybody in here, every young man, you gained a lot of them. I tell you I love you. And you always gonna be with me forever. What can I say about my brother? He was a great father, friend, team player, teammate. He was all American. He was a Cavalier, Clipper, Hawk. To me, he was invincible. I never thought that anything like this could possibly happen to my brother. I grew up looking at you for direction for the next step in my life. And there's, 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 there's no reason that someone have, should have taken you like this without any reason or nothing. It just boggles my mind. I don't understand it, and I can't wrap my, line, my mind around it. And I don't think I, I, I may never, ever wrap my mind around this. But I was reading the other day, and I stumbled up a, on, a path, on a passage. was Proverbs 3 and 5. It says, lean not on your own understanding, but trust in the Lord. And that's all I have to say to everybody out here who loved him, who knew him, who knew his smile, who knew his laugh. Whenever you were around him, there was not a boring moment. You always was doing something fun to keep your mind off of whatever you were going through. If you had a problem, it was gone by the time you got with my brother. So, I love you, gang. Um, by a show of hands, who, who uh, out here knew Lorenzo and his gunny? Just asking. I'm pretty sure most of you know uh, he got gunny from Vern Gunny. And uh, Vern Gunny, as well as that little round thing he loved playing with, is a passion that uh, both of us shared and uh, of the many that he had. And uh, I looked up to Lorenzo, most people admired Kobe Bryant, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, 
well, for him to be in my family and I could visit him and know what he was going through and look at what he did, that was pretty much my role model as far as basketball. Uh, World 42, all throughout high school, and I'm changing next year in college. Uh, I, I stumbled over what to say today, but um, I think Gunny was a big guy who did all the little things, uh, from the little things I saw when I came to camp. He always helped someone. He was always there for someone. As far as his smile, everybody talks about it, and you can't get over that. Um, Fourth of July, he was just in my house. And uh, my dad had an accident on the grill. He opened the grill up, fire came back, broke him in his face, all bad. Uh, came home, sitting on the couch, all burnt up. Gunny came in there with a picture, <laughs> taking cameras. I mean, taking pictures with a camera, saying he's going to put them on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, he looked at my dad, he said, see, that's what you're supposed to do on the fourth. You're supposed to barbecue your uncle. <laughs> And uh, and all that pain, man, I was laughing, and my dad was laughing too, and uh, that's just how y'all should remember him, man, as a person that we're always missing. I know I love him. First of all, I'd like to say that he was the most funniest person he cared for his family, his friends, everybody. Like, like for me, I always get the best present because I'm the youngest out of all my brothers and sisters. It's either they get nothing and I get something, or they get something or I get the best. I know that y'all think that he just died, but keep doing right. We're going to go up to heaven and we're going to see him again. That blooms in May A lovely sunset At the end of the day Someone helping A stranger along the way The feeling I get when I hear a touching prayer, it lets me know that my God is somewhere near. It 
doesn't have to be a miracle. That's a good place for a shout. <laughs> Somebody ought to feel like shouting now. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. A long list of friends are coming now to offer expressions of comfort. Uh, the majority owner of the Grizzlies, Mr. Michael Heisley, a philanthropist, I'll say that word in a minute, Gail S. Rose, a uh, limited partner of the Grizzlies, Elliot Perry, Mayor of the City of Memphis, Mayor A.C. Wharton, former Mayor of the City of Memphis, Dr. Willie W. Harrington, uh, Shelby County Mayor Interim, Mayor Joe Ford, uh, Lafayette County School District, Oxford, Mississippi, uh, Robbie Buford, Booker T. Washington, high school coach, Fred uh, Horton, and also representative from the University of Memphis, National Basketball Association, YMCA, Johnny C. Williams II, Kappa Alpha Psi Resolution, uh, Willie Brooks, and others. And then following these presentations, will be another selection, the Daryl Pettis singers. Please be kind to the family as you come and try to re, uh, keep your speech to at least uh, two minutes. Thank you. I'd like to first start by offering my deep condolences to Lorenzen's family 
talking to his friends. Uh, these are sad times, and I know that so many hearts are really hurting. I'd just like to take a few minutes to give a little bit of our thoughts from my family, but primarily the Grizzly organization, for the wonderful years that Lorenzen Wright performed in this building. I remember I just got into the NBA when we made a trade that brought Lorenzen to Memphis. And he came, and I remember the first time that I met him. To begin with, my first thought, and I know this may sound strange, was what a tremendously handsome man that he was. And uh, he is almost like a movie star. And the smile that he had was so infectious. I mean, it just uh, lightened your spirit. And that was the impression I have even to this day of that first meeting. Lorenzen became the spiritual and in many cases physical leader of the Grizzlies to the five greatest years that we have had. He led us to three uh, playoff appearances. And he inspired not just by his words, but much more so by his actions. There was nothing he would not do to win. There was nothing he would not do to help a fellow uh, player. He was an inspiration to the young team we had, and he was uh, essential to the success that we had. And that I will always remember. The second thing I would like to say that I most remember is uh, we made uh, St. Jude's was a very, very special part of my associations in Memphis. And I'll never forget all of the help. Anytime I wanted it, anytime you asked for it, Lorenzen was there to help. And I can still see his fantastic picture on the wall of the St. Jude's Grizzly House uh, and, and remember what he did for us. Finally, I would just like to close by saying that I think with such a fantastic group of people we have here today, we should all leave this hall with the thought that we're going to do a little bit in Lorenzen's honor to make sure that things like this don't happen again, or at least we bring them down. That is the biggest service that we can pay to him. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. What happened to Lorenzen? is unfathomably unfair and excruciatingly painful. I find myself asking why, why him? And I feel anger rising inside me about this heinous and senseless crime. We rightly rage against his death, but let us try right now to look higher, to reach for the words of Dr. Martin Luther King whose own life was cut short by the bullets of hate. Listen to his words. Returning hate for hate multiplies, hate adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. Hate multiplies hate. Violence multiplies violence in a descending spiral of destruction. The chain reaction of evil must be broken or we shall be plunged into the dark abyss of annihilation. So we are challenged today to step through our own darkness and find the light. I want to take our anger, our grief, our tragedy, and channel it to fulfill Lorenzen's dreams. If we're going to carry Lorenzen's legacy, then we must exemplify love. You see, I believe in heroes. I don't think they are magical or without fault, and I don't need them to be. It's not what they've done on the courts that count, but what kind of person they are off the court. What beauty and truth do they embody? How have they given themselves to the service of others? How do we feel our, about ourselves in their presence? 
there really are people whose presence among us have ennobled our spirit, people who have encouraged and enlightened us along our path, not by their words, but by a lifetime of humble service to others and by a deep prodding to look by a deep prodding for us to follow their lead to be better human beings. This is the light of Lorenzen Wright. Lorenzen was loved by this community, and he returned that love. He gave his love generously, even recklessly, as those of us know who were lucky enough to have him be a friend. I knew Lorenzen first through his father, Herb, who trained my sons, Morgan, Max, and Mikey, at Dean Lott's Fitness. I quickly understood through observing Herb and then meeting Deborah how Lorenzen became the man he was, truly good people. Then my boys attended Lorenzen's summer camps and even became camp counselors, and I watched his selfless devotion to those kids. It meant the world to him. There are thousands of kids in Memphis today whose lives were influenced and changed because of Lorenzen Wright, mine included. When I was involved with the pursuit team and we landed the Grizzlies, I sat next to Wren and Michael Heisley at that first press conference and witnessed the joy in his eyes. He was truly happy to be in Memphis, and his joy was contagious. Lorenzen was a warrior on the court. He would defy physics by playing larger than he was under the basket, which proved that our attitudes and beliefs about ourselves are more powerful than our limitations. Witnessing his determination on the court would fire me up and inspire me to face down the challenges in my own life. And on a lighter note, in 2002, I was asked to be queen of Mardi Gras in Memphis which I almost turned down until I heard that Lorenzen Wright would be king. I quickly changed my mind for the chance to be Lorenzen's queen. We had king and queen couture costumes made. He wore a diamond encrusted medallion around his neck that had LW on it. We rode on a parade float and we went by limousine to Porter Leith Children's Charity together. The children were absolutely stunned when they saw us with our crowns and our capes on. One child asked, are you Snow White? And I said, well, yes, actually I am. But it was Lorenzen they were glued to. And when he found out that all those children were waiting to be adopted, he wanted to adopt them all. Lorenzen loved children above all. He was an incredibly devoted father, and yet, there was room in his heart for all the children of Memphis, even my own sons. He had a particular attachment to my middle son, Max. Maybe because Max was six foot seven inches tall, but maybe because he saw himself in Max, and Max saw himself in Wren. He kept a life-size poster of Wren in his room. I still have it today. Max was a gentle soul a young man called to service who loved kids as much as Wren. But Deborah, I share the pain of a mother's heart who has lost a beloved son. Max was killed in a car accident just a year and a half ago. My heart burst for you when I heard the news. It's a hard journey. And Herb, God has both of them now, two gentle giants, I think they're probably up there in heaven organizing a basketball camp for kids right now. I'll end with a short poem written by Max. I found this poem in his backpack, which was returned to me by the highway patrol after the accident. The bravest, most defiant, most admirable endeavor a human being can embark upon is the solemn vow to love every moment, every living breath. Lorenzen, we are honored to have known you. Good night, sweet prince, my king. Fly high with the angels to your rest. We will follow your lead and play bigger than we are because you taught us that. We vow to love every moment, every living breath. Amen.
first I'd like to thank God for his powerful presence here. My condolences go out to the family and friends of Lorenzo. But I'm proud to have known Lorenzo. I'm proud to have shared a brotherhood and a connection on several fronts. As a proud alumni of the University of Memphis, we wore the same uniform and donned the tiger blue, walked the same campus, practiced on the same court, and was coached and influenced by the same coach, Coach Larry Finch. We both had the opportunity to live out our childhood dreams and wear that NBA uniform and be, a proud, and be a part of one of the most special and unique fraternities in sports, the National Basketball Association. We also share the brotherhood in the fraternity of Kappa Alpha Psi, where achievement stands as its motto and achieve when big. But I am most proud and excited about the brotherhood and the connection we shared in Christ. See, Romans 8, 18 says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall, which shall be revealed to us. So on behalf of the University of Memphis, the National Basketball Association, our brothers at Kappa Alpha Psi, the Great Grizzlies organization, but more importantly, look around. On behalf of the city of Memphis, on behalf of you, I want to say this and leave this with the family as a word of comfort. What we have done for ourselves alone dies with us. What we have done for others and the world lives on. Death is not the greatest loss. The greatest loss is what dies inside of us while we yet live. And it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. And so I say this, if life is a great sunrise, I do not see why death should not be even a greater one. Good afternoon. First, to the family. I want you to know that while I carry the proud title of being mayor of Memphis, I stand as a friend of the family and as a father and to say to you that I personally share your loss and then secondarily, the city of Memphis shares your loss. And as mayor, I want you to know that we are working night and day not to see that things are done quickly, not to rush, but to see that things are done right and that justice will be done. That's our pledge. That's our commitment to you. I will be followed briefly by the Honorable W.W. W. Harrington and the Honorable Joe Ford. 
we all respectfully beg your leave. We're going to have to depart shortly, and I told them I would say that so that they would not have to explain that to you. It is only fitting that in this room where he thrilled so many, inspired so many, and enjoyed the love of so many of his people that we honor and remember Lorenzen Wright in this room, this temple of basketball, he will always be finally and forever at home. Of course, uh, this was not Lorenzen's only home. Just up the street, right that way, his career began in the gym of Booker T. Washington or should I say, Bishop Young, the Booker T. Washington <laughs> High School. And up the street, the other way, the pyramid, where he electrified crowds as one of our great Memphis Tigers. He was quite a familiar presence in Memphis, a young man who never forgot who he was, where he came from, the values that shaped him, and the people who encouraged him along the way. Lorenzen's story was one of those special Memphis stories where a man is able to transcend his roots even while he represents those roots proudly. He traveled the world to do what God called him to do, but Memphis was always his home. We were always glad to welcome him back. God blessed him with otherworldly basketball skills, but also humility. God blessed him with material wealth, but also grace and dignity. God insisted that Lorenzen return his gifts to his community, which he did freely and happily and generously. And in doing so, he became even richer in spirit and in love. Because of all these things, Lorenzen Wright was exceptional. An exceptional talent, teammate, parent, and friend. We mourn the loss of our friend, our son, our peer, Lorenzen, because in him we saw the best of ourselves. In him we saw all the best of our great city, resilient, hardworking, faithful, excellent. In him he could always see our aspirations come to life. But in the pride he gave us, in the spirit of excellence which he pursued, and in the many, many, many lives he inspired with his example, Lorenzen will never be forgotten. Thank you, and may God bless you all. Pastor Natters, to all of the ministers of the gospel that are present this evening and to all of the elected officials, this is an extremely difficult period in the life of a city, Memphis. What has happened, we do not understand. We grieve we mourn, but we clearly do not understand. But thank God for the life of Lorenzo, life that was short, 
But in that short life, Lorenzen gave us a great deal of joy, friendship, and he leaves behind him a host of warm memories. When I was mayor, there was only one jersey of a basketball player that held a permanent place in City Hall. It was Lorenzo's. No other jersey. It was Lorenzo's. As you well know, Herb, uh, uh, and I have not lost a son. I obviously cannot feel the deep sense of loss that you and members of your family feel. But I looked at Lorenzo as a son. He was a good person. Lorenzo was a good guy. Caring, giving, loved young people. Every summer in his summer basketball program, I would attend and would help him to pass out awards. The Lorenzen that I knew was a good person. I always saw the best in Lorenzen. There will be speculation. There will be rumors. But as for Willie Harrington, all I saw in Lorenzen was the very best. Let me, to the family, when, as time passed on, friends will stop calling you, people will stop visiting you, but I want to leave you with this sense of hope that there is a God. He sits high, but he looks low. There is a God that sits high and he looks low. And in your darkest and your deepest moments, know that you can look up to the hills. And as my grandmother would say, I declare God is up there and he will give you comfort. May God bless you. To my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, it's truly an honor and a privilege for me to be here with the right family. And on behalf of the 908,000 citizens Shelby County and the 13 County Board of Commissioners, I want the Wright family to know that you have our condolences and our prayers and we will continue to pray for you. I want to tell a story that um, about Lorenzen. I had the opportunity to see him one time. I was on program at Booker T. Washington High School for the basketball team, and I had taken a proclamation. And I was reading most of the proclamation, and I noticed this gentleman walking in from the back. And he shook hands, and he touched the crowd as he came through. And it wasn't long that I realized it was Lorenzen Wright. I hurried up with my proclamation and it was the last thing on the program and I was going to try to get to him to shake his hand but he recognized me speaking and, and he sit right in front and after the program was over I went down and I was trying my best to get to him and he was trying his best to get to me the closer I got to Lorenzen the taller he got and we finally shook hands, and I won't forget that day. I shook hands with a 
wonderful gentleman, a soft-spoken gentleman, a father, a Memphian. And it was something about that handshaking, that embracement that I'll never forget. I went home and I told my wife that I'd met Lorenzen Wright. And I often told that story to my friends and that's what I'll remember about your husband and your father and your son and your cousin. And I'm gonna take those memories, I'm gonna let them live on. We don't have to worry about Lorenzen. His memories will live on for generations and generations. And I'll be a part of that because I'll tell that story. Thank you all for letting me be a part of this. And at this time, we'll, we'll bring up Congressman Cohen. Good, e good afternoon to all the clergy, Dr. Uh, Netters, Dr. Adkins, Bishop Young, and all the other clergy, to the elected officials, but especially the Wrights, to the Coach Wright, to Mrs. Marion, to his beautiful and handsome children, his siblings, grandparents, grandchildren, what a beautiful family, and all the fans and all the friends, Lorenzen Wright. It's a sad day that we gather here, but we remember the beauty and the love of Lorenzen Wright. As your congressman, I was able to stand up on the House floor and read some words to the nation on C-SPAN about Lorenzen Wright's life and the loss that we suffered. Those words are incorporated in this papers, which I have for the family, which will be part of the congressional record. And they represent facts that have been discussed about Lorenzen's life, his career at the University of Memphis, where he scored over 1,000 points in just two seasons, took us to the Sweet 16. I was in Austin when we beat Purdue and we beat Louisville, and I was in Kansas City when I got that bad call and we lost to Arkansas. He was a tiger and a great tiger, and he was a great grizzly and a great warrior and probably the only individual that's been in high school and college and in the pros, a hero in all levels here in Memphis, Tennessee. But to think, <laughs> the thing that was most important was his love of his family and his children and of children everywhere. Lorenzen Wright had more love than could fill this FedEx forum and the love that I've seen here when the family and friends came in and is expressed here shows that the love for him was equal. He will be remembered for that love and that spirit and that warmth as much as for his talents on the court. Mayor Harrington mentioned, and he, he's not here, but he mentioned something that we share in common, and surprisingly enough, we, we share a lot in common. You wouldn't know it. And you wouldn't think I was one-upping him. I just happened to bring it. I got only one jersey, signed by Lorenzen Wright. And I would like to ask Dr. Raines and Mr. Heisley, one day this jersey should be in the rafters forever. to recognize the next speaker from the NBA, Ms. Chen. Thank you. Um, as you can imagine, I'm, I'm here in my official capacity to extend our condolences of the whole NBA family, our commissioner, David Stern, our deputy commissioner, Adam Silver, and the entire NBA family. But I would have been here anyway um, I don't need to speak to Lorenzen's career as a basketball player because it's well documented and we're all very proud of it, but more so to the type of person that he was and all that he's done. Um, 13 years in the league where a, your career is actually averages at 4.7 years says it all. But Lorenzen was the type of person, as I knew him, that did everything that we asked him and everything that we didn't ask him and that's all the good things. Um, in his kind, gentle spirit, 
He mentored our younger players. Uh, he pulled guys to the side for us. He kept our meetings lively with his sense of humor, um, but was always there to lend a hand, always recognized what needed to be done. And while this is such a sad occasion, it's, um, it's amazing to be here to see not only his parents who shaped and formed him, um, but all of the other many people who, who helped and contributed to the type of young man that he became. We are awfully proud of all that he's done, um, but so very deeply saddened for this loss. So please know that he's always a part of the NBA family and the children are always a part of the NBA family and we will always be here and do whatever it is that we can do. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to give thanks to God for allowing Lorenzo to be part of my life and a part of my family. Where do I begin? This has been one of the most difficult tasks I've ever attempted. When Deborah called me on Friday and asked me to speak about Lorenzo's time at Lafayette High School, I sat in careful contemplation. I then read an editorial by Don Whitten of the Oxford Eagle entitled, Remembering the Lorenzen Wright I Knew. I thought about this and decided that would take too long since I've known him since he was two years old. I'm going to mention a few things from the 11 years that he spent with us in the Lafayette County School District. In elementary school, he towered over the other children, but he was a gentle giant. His infectious smile and good nature made him a favorite of the students and the teachers. In middle school, he had the idea of being the next great football standout. His pants didn't even reach his knees. So as we all know, that idea didn't last very long. As he entered high school, he continued growing and developing into a basketball standout with unlimited potential. I re remember him leading Lafayette High School as a junior to the state championship game against Lawrence County. He was more than a great basketball player. He was well-mannered, kind-hearted, and fun-loving. He always made people around him feel good about themselves. He always remembered where he came from he began at the Lafayette County School District from humble beginnings and rose to the pinnacle of success as a basketball player when he was able to play in the NBA. He didn't forget us when he reached those lofty heights. He supplied the basketball team with shoes and with his knowledge of the game. He could always be found giving pointers and encouraging the team. Two years ago, Lafayette High School retired Lorenzo's number 42 basketball jersey. The school was established in 1965, and there are only three jerseys that have been retired in all our sports. The number 20 of former NBA assistant coach Peggy Gillum Granderson, the number 22 of current WNBA basketball coach Jennifer Gillum, and the number 42 of Lorenzo Wright. Each of these three individuals were great basketball players, but they were even greater people. We love you and we will miss you, Mr. Lorenzen Van Gunyan Wright. On behalf of the Booker Washington family, we'd like to extend our heart and our wishes out to the family of, right, of the Rice family, especially you, Herb. Herb and I go back a long way. 
As I stand before each and every one of you, I cannot help think about some of our unfortunate basketball players that we've coached. Players such as Antonio Burks almost lost his life. Andre Allen made a bad choice. Patrick Robeson, we call Little Pat, almost lost his life through a car wreck. Corey Anthony, bad choice. And we can go on and on. And last, the risen right. He just happened to be not more than just a basketball, uh, basketball player, but a, a son of mine. So, as a coach, talking to our coaches out here, we need to form an umbrella of protection. Talk to our young athletes. Show them the way, the right way. Protect them. Because sooner or later, they will be in the footsteps of people like Lorenzo Wright. And so I conclude my feelings for the entire Book of Washington family. We extend our hearts out to Herb, Sarah, Deborah, I'm sorry. Lorenzo, rest in peace. Your spirit will forever live on in the halls of Booker T. Washington High School. Thank you. To my Father in heaven, who gave me the activity of my limb this morning and started me on my way. A day I'd never seen before, a day I'd never thought of, but he made a way, and I'm here. God is good. All the time, he's good. I have a memorandum. Coach Herb, Mother D. That was a long ride from North Carolina. And for the Lorenzen Wright family, a family that prays together, stays together, where the Wright has been a part of my family for the last seven years. Our family started playing basketball together in Orlando, Florida in August of 2004 as we was ranked number 12th in the country out of 180 teams. The next year, Renz became the head coach along with her, ranked number seven in the country. The following year, we was ranked number five out of 135 teams. 135, we was ranked number five from Memphis, Tennessee. Before you, you have these young collegiate athletes that Renz loved, and he's for. We are sitting in North Carolina with five pair of brand new gym shoes, four sets of brand new uniforms. Now tell me, did Renz not spoil those kids? Every year that Renz came back home, he had a free basketball camp. I'm gonna put the notes down for one second. I'm a father. And I love my boys. But I think Renz tried to take one of them away from me. That's the young man with the braids. And Herb tried to take him too. But let me tell you, Herb, you can't have him. That's mine. But to bring joy from the YOMCA to salute Luke and my boy Melvin, love you guys for helping us out when we needed you the most, and to the family. 
God don't make mistakes. This was done for a reason. And most of you all know what I do for a living. We as a people have to take back our community. We have to take back our streets. We cannot be afraid of our children. We have to be that village that raised that child. Cheryl, you're going to need some help. I know joy's coming in the morning time. I know we look up to the hill if we're blessed and fall down. But Cheryl, you're going to need some help. That's when we as a village must step in. She can't do it by herself. We can't run tomorrow. We got to be here today. We got to help take care of these kids. Snoop, Lorenzen Jr., boy, I love you. And if you need me or my family, you call me. I know where you stay. Mike said I'd be there. Well, Johnny William would be there too. It's going to take a village to protect this family. We, are, we need everybody to wrap their arms around them. Like the mayor said, the ex-mayor said, it's going to be rumors. There's going to be a hearsay. But God knows the truth. And they will have to stand before the Lord. And in my closing, don't tell me nothing about the mayor. Don't tell me nothing about the chief of police. Tell me something about the community. We have to do this here. If we don't stand for it, don't expect nobody else to do it. We got to come together as a people and take back our streets, take back our neighborhood. You got to do that. I got to do that. If we don't, our kids going to be lost. Parents, I don't care what you do in life. Take time. Listen and love your kids. Listen to them. Because if you don't listen to them, the streets going to get them. And when the streets going to get them, they going to die. It's going to be too late. Take back. Listen. Learn. And love. God bless you. God keep you. If you need me, call me. Can I get an amen? Amen. Good evening. Let's give God a hand. <clears throat> to the family of Brother Lorenzen D. Wright Sr., I'm going to ask all Capitals in the building if they were stand. All Capitals. We have them in the rear. We have them up here on the podium. We are here. On behalf of the Grand Pole Mark, Dwayne M. Mary Esquire, our leadership team, and the nearly 150,000 members of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. Please accept our sincere condolences and our heartfelt sympathy in your time of sorrow. We have been and remain in prayer for the entire family, and so today, even as we join you and thousands of people worldwide in mourning for the White's death, we also find comfort in acknowledging his life and his legacy. And so we present our resolution on behalf of Brother Lorenzen B. Wright Sr. Well, as our beloved brother Lorenzen B. Wright Sr. entered the chapter invisible on July 19th in the year of our Lord, 2010, he was a committed life member of our noble bond having been duly initiated into the University of Memphis, the Kappa Beta chapter of Kappa on June 7th, 1996, and have lived by his tenets of achievement in every field of human endeavor. And whereas Brother Wright was a true, committed Kappa man, serving his fraternity with distinction 
and provide exemplary service to his community. Brother Wright was an avid supporter of a Kappa Days of Caring mentoring tutoring program, serving as a life skill speaker on numerous occasions and providing substantial financial support. And whereas Brother Wright was an outstanding athlete whose transit racial, cultural, class, gender, and age barriers while remaining true to himself, his family, and God. As a Kappa man, Brother Wright exemplified the very essence of our motto, which is achievement. As Kappa men, we are extremely proud that Brother Wright's achievements stood as a mirror for us to view our own commitments so we can assess accurately whether we are in fact making a difference in the lives of others. Indeed, Memphis, as well as this nation, is a better place today because Brother Wright dedicated his life to making a difference in the lives of ordinary people. We honor him in life and we remember him with reverence. Be it resolved that by the order of our South Central Province Council Board of Directors, that August 4th be chronicled in the Great Scrolls of Kappa in the memory of Brother Lorenzen B. Wright and all chapters and members recognize this as such. Be it further resolved that the family of Brother Wright receive a copy of this resolution expressive of the esteem in which the fraternity holds him and appropriately honor his memory. And be it finally resolved that a copy of this resolution be filed among the permanent archives at our international headquarters in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I fix my seal and signature. This is William Brooks Province Hallmark and the brothers of Kappa Alpha Psi. Thank you and may God bless the legacy of Brother Wright. As we come now to the closing portion of this celebration, we will have a, a musical selection, the Daryl Pettis Singers Acknowledgements, uh, Camille Logan, Family Poem, uh, Miss a Reverend Latandra C. Lewis, Seat of Life Church, Words of salutation, Reverend Jerry Taylor, Greater Love Missionary Baptist Church, and then musical selection, Miss Ruby Wilson of the Mount Vernon Baptist Church, Westwood. Let me just share a couple of things uh, on behalf of the Mount Vernon Church family. Lorenzen and his family joined the Mount Vernon Baptist Church sometime in the year of 94 while he was enrolled at the University of Memphis and also on the basketball team. After being drafted to in the NBA, he began giving back to our congregation through various activities. And he returned to Memphis to play with the Grizzlies, Lorenzen, donated tickets to our youth in the church and to the kids' program. Many youth enjoy the game in Wren's Den, the section reserved for guests for, Len for Lorenz and Wright. He donated tickets valued at over $50,000 to the young people in our church and community. Additionally, he invited youth to his camp where they train for job training and readiness. He gave so much to our church and to our family and community, and we're just grateful to God that he and his family made the Mount Vernon Baptist Church Westwood their home uh, church, their church home. And now we'll have the uh, selection, just a closer walk with thee, Del Pettis and the remainder of these will come as stated.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, everybody. Let's put our hands together and try to create the sound of celebration. We're going to take it back to church, everybody. Come on, everybody. Put your hands. wouldn't be church without one of these. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. all you got to do is try to get closer to it. I just need about 200 of y'all to just jump up on your feet right now and just wave your hand at the Lord and say, Lord, whatever you do, just let me Get closer. Whatever's in me that should not be, take it away from me. I find somebody that's close.
Good afternoon. Let's give them another round of applause. We, we have a little family secret and Deborah always likes to hear us tell her that um, she told us so, Deborah, you told us so about Dale Pettis. <laughs> They're doing a fabulous job. The family would first like to give thanks to our Lord and Savior for blessing us with Lorenzen for 34 years. We are thankful for everyone today who shares in this memorial service with us by your presence via television, internet, or in spirit. We are sincerely thankful to Michael Heisley and the entire Grizzlies organization for their unwavering support of Lorenzen and our family. On behalf of our family, and as you can see, as many of us, Shara, Shara and Lorenzen's precious gem, his namesake, as everyone knows him as Snoop, Lauren, Shamar, Lamar, Lawson, and Sophia, his mother, Deborah, whose unconditional love will last into eternity, and her supportive spouse, Tommy. His father, Herb, who ruled with an iron fist, but loved ever so gently. And his better half, Lisa. No words can describe how kind and loving she has been over the years. His sisters, and brothers, grandmothers, both of them are here, <laughs> aunts, uncles, and cousins. We are honored for the partnership with the Grizzlies for the establishment of the Lorenzen Wright Senior Memorial Fund. The Wright family and the Grizzlies are committed to the city of Memphis through continuous community service and we invite everyone to participate in this long-lasting endeavor. We are grateful to the NBA, the University of Memphis, Kappa Alpha Psi, Ridgeway High School, Atlanta Hawks, Miami Heat, and many other players and their families who have sent cards, flowers, and other acts of kindness to the FedEx Corporation, specifically FedEx Office, which has always been committed to delivering on time, has without a doubt delivered overnight and on time with our programs that you read today. For those of you who did not receive a program, you will be able to download it from the internet. The Germantown FedEx location worked hand in hand with our family. And everything we do, we do as a family. So we want to tell Germantown, thanks for listening to all of the voices in our family to complete the program. We are forever thankful to all of Lorenzen's fans. You supported him, not only here in Memphis, but on every court in which he played. But in here in Grizz country, this is where Lorenzen shined. This is where our family came out in record numbers to support the Grizzlies franchise and to see them go to the actual playoffs. And Mr. Heisley, we want to go back to the playoffs. <laughs> um, today, I'm going to read a proclamation that was sent from Ophelia Ford's office. Unfortunately, she could not be here today, but I'm gonna read the proclamation that was sent from her office. Whereas the members of this General Assembly were greatly saddened to learn of the untimely passing of Lorenzen Wright Sr. of Memphis and 
Whereas a renowned basketball star, Lorenzen Wright, played 13 seasons in the National Basketball Association for the Los Angeles Clippers, Atlanta Hawks, Memphis Grizzlies, Sacramento Kings, and the Cleveland Cavaliers after a highly successful college career at the University of Memphis. And whereas raised near Oxford, Mississippi by his mother, Zebra Marion, Mr. Wright displayed phenomenal basketball skills at an early age. Following in the footsteps of his father, Herb Wright, who played professionally in Finland and later coached his son from a wheelchair. And whereas a towering presence in the paint at six feet 11 inches, Lorenzen Wright was considered one of the nation's top rebounders and defenders during his senior season at Booker T. Washington High School in Memphis, where he had enrolled after moving to the Bluff City. And whereas choosing to stay in Memphis and play college basketball for the University of Memphis Tigers basketball program, Mr. Wright quickly displayed his tremendous athleticism and knowledge of the game as he earned 13 All-American honors from the Associate Press as a sophomore, and whereas entering the NBA draft in 1996, after his sophomore season, Lorenzen Wright was selected as the seventh pick overall by the Los Angeles Clippers after later playing for the Atlanta Hawks he was traded to his hometown, Memphis Grizzlies, in 2001 and spent the next five seasons proudly representing the good people of Memphis. And whereas noted for the playing with passion on a nightly basis, Lorenzen Wright never backed down from any challenge on the court during his career and was deeply respected and admired by his teammates and opponents of light throughout the NBA. And whereas seeking to give back to the city he loves so much, Mr. Wright coached and funded a Youth of Memphis Competitors Association, AAU team, for several years, even after returning to Atlanta to play for the Hawks. And whereas Lorenzen Wright was also deeply devoted to his family, and he always endeavored to remain true to family values of the highest order in 2003 after the sudden death of his infant daughter, Sierra. He founded the Sierra Simone Wright Scholarship Fund in her honor. And whereas Lorenzen Wright is survived by his mother, Deborah Marion, his father, Herb Wright, and his six children, and whereas Lorenzen Wright leaves behind an indelible legacy of integrity and poverty in public life, compassion and loyalty in private life, and diligence and dedication in all of his chosen endeavors. And whereas it is fitting that this General Assembly should pause to remember the bountiful life of this exceptional public servant, and human being now therefore. I, Ron Ramsey, Speaker of the Senate of the 106th General Assembly of the State of Tennessee at the request of and in conjunction with Senator Ophelia Ford, do hereby proclaim that we honor the memory of Lorenzen Wright, reflecting fondly upon his impeccable character and his stalwart commitment to living the examined life with courage and conviction. We express our sympathy and offer our condolences to the family of Mr. Wright. Proclaimed in Nashville, Tennessee, on this fourth day of August, 2010. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. To all of the Reverend clergy, to the city of Memphis, to this my bereaved family, I stand here today with words to you, Memphis and Shelby County. A charge that was given to the Geddes Wright family, which was and still is the maternal family of Lorenzen. This charge was written in 1993 by Lorenzen's great aunt, the late Miss Mary Vassar Williams of South Bend, Indiana. Every time our family got together, this charge was read and it's entitled, After the Gathering, What Then? Gatherings are for families and friends. It's for sharing experiences of yesteryear's accomplishments and today's plans, of girls becoming young women and boys becoming a man, of newborn babies, deceased loved ones, high school, entering college, graduation, of longtime friends, and special relations. But after this gathering, what then? May I suggest to you, spend some time with your neighbors. Spend some time with your friends. Spend some time with your grandfather. Spend some time with your grandmother. Be good to yourself and each other. We are here in support of one another, parents, friends, cousins, sisters, and brothers. We are sad, but accommodating, embracing, and communicating. We are responding and relating. But after this gathering, what then? May I suggest spend some time with your neighbors, Spend some time with your friends. Spend some time with your grandfather. Spend some time with your grandmother. Be good to yourself and each other. When thinking of the good times you had linking the future with the past, think of Deborah and Tommy Lee, Mr. Herb and Miss Lisa, the children and all the others. Follow up with a phone call or a letter. If nothing else, an email might be better. Kind expressions are to be made. They are never to be shut up in a cage. Time will tell if you've expressed a lie or the truth. After this gathering, what will you do? May I suggest to you, spend some time with your neighbor. Spend some time with your friend. Spend some time with your sister. Spend some time with your brother. Be good to yourself and each other. Families are precious treasures with a beginning and an end. To be part of one, you might fail, but always win. Families are like contemporary furniture and antiques. They are trees with roots and branches. That's why you've come all this distance to me. To nurture these roots, we must share experiences, ideas, insights, patience, and abilities to prepare the future women 
and the oncoming men, because after this gathering, what then? May I suggest to you, spend some time with your neighbor, spend some time with your friends, spend some time with your cousins, spend some time with your brother. Be good to yourself and each other. One by one, we are going to leave this earth. Maybe tonight, tomorrow, or in a few days, with loving thoughts from heart to face. Keep the torch burning for your children, your children's children, and the whole human race. After all, gatherings are for sharing and caring, greeting families and friends about girls becoming young women and about boys becoming young men. From these two roots, branches multiply. The children will become the what's and their ideas will become the why. The boys will become husbands and the girls will become wives. May I suggest to you, to all of you that are here today, when you return home, spend some time with your neighbors. Spend some time with your friends. Spend some time with your cousins. Spend some time with your sisters. And spend some time with your brothers. Be good to yourself and one another. After the gathering, what then? Let us pray. God, we come before we ask you for anything. We thank you for your everything. We thank you for your outstretched arms, and we thank you for giving us access and giving us strength to come together. And we pray, God, that in all our getting, that we receive an understanding and that you allow your word to fall fresh on good ground. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. We say thank God. And amen. Come on, put those hands together. Give God a hand of praise. Come on, one more time for the legacy and the life of Lorenzo. We're grateful. Uh, we do thank the Lord and we're grateful. We're honored and won't be before you long. Want to thank um, all of the saints of God and uh, especially. Uh, to the dignitaries and to those that uh, uh, come out to celebrate the life of Lorenzo and uh, that uh, meant so many different things to so many different people. Um, and uh, thank God for his father, and, uh, Coach Wright, and his wife, and thank God for uh, Brother Marion and Sister Marion, uh, a member of our church. Uh, a couple of things that uh, won't be before you long but uh, uh, it's a blessing when there's a star in the family amen uh, just in case you didn't know when you got one star in the family that mean all of you are vips that's the way that go come on give this family a great big hand for sharing their star amen you know, uh, one of the things, and we come and uh, uh, want to thank them in a humble way for uh, this uh, celebration. And, uh, one of the things that I recognize and I say uh, quite often, and that is that uh, you may not never pay what you owe, but you're going to always reap what you sow. And that's what God. Uh, has given us. Amen. Uh, one of the things, and it's evident that uh, uh, Renzo meant uh, so much, and um, uh, you know, he impressed and embraced our city with his time, with his talent, with his treasure. Uh, he did a uh, phenomenal job. Uh, a 
it was amazing because him being the star he was, uh, even in the midst of being known all over the world, never embraced and took on a star mentality. And sometimes you have to look uh, in recognizing the impact that he made, uh, how uh, it's, it's quite comical uh, that even when you look and see and think about and reflect on his life, uh, I'm sure that he got it from his dad, the, the training that he told him, when you play, play with an attitude. He kept an attitude when he was on the court. Oftentimes, I walked through the house and tell Sister Taylor, she said, do you see how rough he looked? I said, oh, he's just a gentle giant. But one of the impacts that you got to know uh, and no matter what the case is, and just in even in leaving you, um, uh, some of the comforting words, uh, it's impressive when God has given us a star, uh, a man, a young man, that uh, God still gave him a promotion because Jesus was here 33 years, and he was here 34. <laughs> so God still gave him some extra time. Come on, put those hands together. Amen. You know, in every season, many recognize whenever I do extensive talking like this, maybe the message might be 10 minutes. Uh, but uh, in every season, and you have 82 games in one season, 13 years, that was impressive in the NBA. Amen. And even in his transition that he went through, uh, God blessed him. Uh, I'm often emphasizing uh, that uh, no matter what transitions we encounter, no matter what my struggles are, it does not define who I am, even in my struggles. Because not y'all have sinned, but all have sinned. Romans 3 and 23. Even in my shortcoming, it don't define who I am. Because God is a good God. I ought to have some believers in the house. Uh, amen. Uh, whenever there is something missing. Whenever there's something missing. Come on, there's something missing. Whenever there's something missing, there's a void uh, that needs to be filled. Whenever something is missing, uh, when we think about it, amen, uh, when things are missing and we have so many uh, unanswered questions, uh, we say to ourselves, Lord, I wonder why. Why? things happen the way they happen. Why bad things happen to good people. But you got to know that the enemy got a plot, but God got a plan. No matter what the case is, God has a plan. And even in knowing that God has a plan, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 indicates that all things work together for the good. May not always feel good, but is working for your good. Amen. And I want to commend this family. I want to commend them. Uh, thank God for the children. Uh, one of the writers, uh, one of the polished professors, uh, Dr. W. Uh, e. B. Du Bois, he, he talked about it, and he said that children learn more by what you are other than what you teach. That's why these children can gravitate uh, to the things that their father and who he was. They could gravitate to that. That's why uh, those twins and Dominique and all of them could want to be like him uh, because uh, children gravitate more to what you are other than what you teach. And he loved basketball. Amen. Uh, 
read you two verses and I'm out of here. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, verse 2. It indicates something to us uh, that's amazing. I thought about it in the midst and uh, asked the Lord to give me what you need. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, uh, verse 2, and it, it, it kind of enlightens us. It says to us, to everything there is a season. And he allows us to know uh, not only is there a season, he said, and a time to every purpose under the heavens. And then he picked it up in verse 2 and he uh, elaborated on it. He said, there's a time to be born and a time to to die. That's what he said. He said there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Amen. Uh, and give me about 10 minutes and we want to talk just briefly. Come on, say when the seasons change. You may be seated. Amen. When the seasons change, throughout the transition of looking and recognizing and understanding uh, something so devastating and so traumatic to where it would almost cause us to lose our mind when we see these kind of devastating situations. But it's amazing how God's ways are not our ways. Uh, God's thoughts are not our thoughts. Uh, you have to recognize God's plan supersedes the plan of man. Uh, come on, say God got a plan. Uh, he has a plan and when you see it, uh, you recognize it, amen, that even in the midst of God's plan, he allowed things to increase our faith. And to increase our joy. Uh, sometime when you look at it, amen, he talks about the strength that we would have as a family. Where do we get strength? Amen. Nehemiah chapter 8 picked it up. And he said, first of all, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. That, that's why when the flower fades and when the phone calls stop coming, you got to know that the joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. Something that happens. Amen. Whenever seasons begin to change. Amen. Many uh, have to recognize that the poetic writer uh, talked about it. Amen. In a major way. And, and, and one of the things that she emphasized. And that is that when people show you who they are. Believe them the first time. Uh, they don't have to come back. And. Do it all over again. But when they show you who they are, believe them the first time. And even in looking at it, amen, something that happens and you have to identify with it that my problems are not who I am. Uh, I know I have struggles. I know I have problems. I know I have shortcomings. But that's not who I am. Amen. Come on, tell somebody, you must don't know about me. <laughs> Uh, that, that's not who I am. Hey, uh, my problems, my struggles uh, is not, does not define me. Uh, you have to look at it, amen, because Christ allows us to see it. Yes, I've had some bad days. And yes, I've had some hardships. And yes, I've been short in some areas, amen. But all of us have been short. Amen. Not, not just all of us being short, uh, but even in the midst of recognizing I've had some bad days and hard days, but I've had some good days too. Uh, when you think about uh, Lorenzo, you can, you can uh, uh, reminisce on the good days that he had. Amen. The good time that you spent with him. Amen. Having uh, one that invested his time, invested his talent invested his treasure. Uh, he was free-hearted, amen. No matter where he went, he was always giving. Uh, showed up at the church one day with his family, uh, with his mother, and even in the midst of being there, 
uh, set in the back because he didn't have a star mentality. Amen. Sometime, amen, uh, when people know uh, that uh, they have uh, a star uh, where they are, you meet their chest before you meet them. Come on in this house. But something I need to tell you, he had uh, an humble spirit. Amen. Was loving. Uh, yes, he was. Amen. When you look out and see the family, you look around and see the city, you understand that he was loved by so many people. Amen. That, that's, that's the love that God would deposit in us. But something that the writer said that made a difference. He said, uh, to everything there is a season. The season will change on you. Uh, no matter where you are, where you go, what your demographics are, what your ethnicity is, the season will change. Uh, when you look and when you think about it, uh, something happened, amen, in the midst, amen, of, of this transition. Uh, the season, come on, say the seasons was changing. Uh, this boy, uh, young man, was an icon to the city. Uh, no matter what the case uh, may be, but he heard a clarion call uh, because uh, the season was changing. Uh, I need to tell you that no matter who you are, you can't stop a season. Amen. No matter uh, what kind of clothes you have on, uh, it may be hot this time, but oh, uh, after a while, winter is coming. Uh, you have to know uh, that in the midst, whenever season uh, change, things have to change. Uh, when season change, things change. Uh, winter uh, change. Spring change. Summer was changing. But something that you have to know, uh, Lorenzo was in that season of fall. Stay with me here. Uh, he had went through the winter stage and, and he had went through the spring stage and he had went through the summer stage. Now he was in the stage uh, of fall. And, and something that you have to know uh, that the writer said, we fall down. Uh, thank you, Lord. But, but we get up and no matter how bad it may seem and no matter how tough Things may uh, be, we fall down, but we get up. Something I want to tell you in closing and looking at this thing, amen. Uh, for me to live is Christ, uh, but to die is gain. Uh, you got to know it, amen. The writer talked about it, amen. To everything that is a season, an agriculture picture, he talked about. Planning, plucking up, even in the midst of doing it, the Bible gives us to know that there is a time to be born and a time to die. No matter where you are, you can't control birth and you can't control death. In Revelation, Jesus said, I have the keys of death and hell. That's what he said. And in recognizing that you can't leave till God says it's time to leave. Uh, because it's not by accident, but it's by providence. Uh, that writer sat outside of Buckingham Palace, uh, had so many things going, and he looked out that palace, kept wanting to go in. I'm finished. Wanting to go in. They looked at him. They said, son, you can't go in there because that palace is sealed. They said, but I want to go in there. That boy looked at it. He said, I want to go in. And every time he tried to go to the palace, those guards were shut up to where he can't go in. Went outside, set up on a cliff. When he set up on that cliff, uh, he started to cry. And he noticed that he heard tracks coming, tracks of a horse. He looked and saw, couldn't hardly see because he was crying. And uh, finally, the man put up on that horse and said, young man, I noticed that you're crying. He said, yes, sir, I'm crying. He said, well, what's wrong with you? He said, you see that palace, that beautiful place? He said, I want to go in there. 
He said, but every time I try to go in, they discard me and they won't let me in. He said, you can't get in. He said, young man, put your hand in my hand. He said, sir, I watched people and everybody that stepped up, they couldn't get in. He said, young man, put your hand in my hand. He said, put it in there when the seasons change. He put his hand in there, and when he put it in there, he said, come on and go with me. And they walked up to that palace. And when they walked up to the first set of guards, they disarmed themselves. Went to the second set. They disarmed themselves. That boy stopped crying. He said, who are you? He said, listen, I'm sorry. He said, I'm the Duke of Windsor. He said, the king is my daddy. He said, not only am I going to take you to the palace, I'm going to take you to meet the king. And I want to tell you some family, even though it's hard where it is right now, if you put your hand in the Lord's hand, if you keep your hand when the flowers fades and when people stop calling, if you put your hand in the Lord's hand, not only will he take you to the palace, but he'll take you to meet the king. Come on, put those hands together and give God. One of these mornings won't be very long. You will look for me and I'll be gone home. I'm going, I'm going to a Jump and shout Nobody there
Everybody at you where I'm going. Y'all gonna put your hands together. Where I'm going oh, to uh, Oh, if anybody at you.
was my sins away. 